What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle, and if you've been following the RRHQ build, uh, we're in that right now. And the last video was building this staircase wall that is going to have the staircase behind it going up to the upstairs. Underneath that staircase is my mechanical room. That is where all the good stuff is. It's going to be the radiant heated floor, my service panel for my electrical, probably water softener, all that good stuff. There's not a ton of room in there. So upon talking to Eric from Mechanical Hub, who's going to be doing the radiant heated system, the boiler, all that good stuff, we realized that this service panel back here, my electrical service panel, is in a not so good spot. So I need to move that. Now, because I need to move that, I'm going to have to change up some of my, my framing. So you'll notice that I've already started taking apart some of this uh, doorway here that's going to be into the bathroom. That bathroom door is going to get changed around to this side over here, which is easy. That's no big deal. Then what I need to do is where this doorway into my mechanical room is, I'm actually going to extend a wall out. I'm going to turn it into some sort of a hallway, and I'm going to be able to move my electrical panel away from that corner, which is where the boiler system is going to go and give Eric a ton of room. I'm also hoping to get an electrical box mounted for him. My other mechanical contractor is gonna be helping me trench in and get my gas line into the building. I've already got my natural gas service to the building. I just need to bring it in and that will come in and then I'm going to be able to put a wall of sheathing on this back wall for all the mechanicals to be easily screwed and mounted. Um, so that's kind of what my goal is. I don't know if I'll get it all done today, but I will get it done this video. So let's get into it. I'm just glad I screwed all this stuff. I didn't make this easy on myself to re to have to re remodel. Just I'll reuse that stud, cut one more. This wall will be framed back out, and then uh, I can concentrate on making this little alcove, which, I mean, it'll just be an extra room, and what I'll be able to do is move this electrical panel right here. One wall done. We want to be thirty eight and a half. So the advantage of doing it this way is now what I can do is turn my laser on and make sure that this jam is perfectly plumb. Now that I've got that door reframed in, I've got that wall closed off. We're going to build a wall coming out. Right here you can see the boards that are defining kind of where this little hallway is going to go. Instead of putting a door out here flush with this wall, just to give myself a little bit of visual interest, I'm going to actually set it back and then make it a little bit of an outside corner here and then come across and then go back. The reason being is this whole area is for my bench and I don't want it to be tucked back. I kind of wanted it to be flush. So I'm gonna just bring this wall out far enough to define that door space to put my bench in. And then it will also, I think, be a little bit more visually interesting than just a big block wall coming around here. It'll kind of come in, go back, across, 
out and then that way. So I don't know, maybe I'm just dumb and I am a glutton for more work, but uh, I think it will be a little bit better instead of having those two doors flush with each other. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, but I need to go run, get some more lumber because I don't have enough two by fours and then we'll frame this all in. 32 inches. That's exactly what I wanted. Remember I said that the only ladder I like to use is a double-sided ladder? It really does make this a lot, a lot, lot easier. Now, if you remember when I did my radiant tubing, the tubing is locked into the bottom with the uh, heat sheet heavy. So the foam at the bottom, which is a five inch thick slab, has those nodules that I put the radiant heating in. I'm not even going five inches deep, but that also includes the inch and a half two by. So I'm far away from hitting any of my tubing. If you guys haven't heard of the recon tape measure, here it is. It's a little big, but it's uh, super smart. So got a digital readout screen, gives you the readout of the uh, tape, which is kind of nice. So I mean, up to 30 seconds, so 15 inch, seven, 30 seconds. And what's really nice is you can change what, um, if it's running, reading the front or the back. So here is the cool thing about this. So if I've got 14, 23, 30 seconds, I hit that button, boom, it's gonna save it right here. So I can get a bunch of different measurements, grab a measurement, boom, 21, 9 sixteenths, okay? I can go over my cut station and I got all my measurements that I need to cut. So it is pretty cool, definitely a little bit big, and also you can keep scrolling. So I can go up to my first measurement and then I can just keep going down and I can delete them. And so as I'm cutting, I can delete the ones I've already cut. Hard hat area, Kyle. Holy crap. Kind of forgot about that board. All right, laser. Get that laser back on. Let's verify. Always verify. Now what I can do is use these guys, which were my old doors. Nothing wrong with them. It'd be a hair short, but that's not gonna hurt nothing. Be a good solid corner. Did it. Finally, got all the rework done for all the framing. Now all I have to do is move that electrical box. Talk to my electrician, should be pretty easy. I can flip that box over. I should have enough wire. I just have to extend my conduit, which I have some scrap. So all the hard work's done. Uh, everything's already hooked up. I'll basically just unhook it and hook it right back up. But first, obviously, I need to go turn my power off so I've got no power here at the building and get that moved. And then really the, the hard part of the rework is done and I can move on to prepping for the boiler and all the mechanicals getting done in the room with some plywood. All right, so what I need to do, I got this all taken apart. Basically, I'm gonna extend this over, bring it up. I should have enough because I'm gonna come into the bottom of the box instead of uh, going through the bottom and all the way around. a lot of work. Now I get the fun part of getting these put in where they go, which shouldn't be too bad. All right, it's like watching paint dry. I'm gonna get these cut down, put in, and then I'll have this box 
ready to get used again. Wasn't too bad, definitely uh, wish I wouldn't have had to do it, but we'll get this done, be back to where we were this morning, and then I can move on to prepping this wall for uh, Eric to get here and do um, mechanical stuff. And hopefully I'll have more light, because sorry, it's kind of dark in here. We've got the Kubota warming up, we've got the Land Pride trencher installed on it, and we're going to be putting some uh, trencher lines in for gas lines. So Greg's doing a little bit of manual labor right here. He's getting a little bit of a hole opened up right by my gas meter. And we've gotta go all the way around the building because my service utility room is in the back corner. And instead of coming in right here and then trying to fish it through the entire building, my contractor and I decided that it would be easier and less expensive and less chance for any gas leaks if you minimize any amount of piping inside. This should be warmed up, should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and start trenching some holes. Not holes, trenches. Be trenching trenches. Trencher with the Kubota is like a cheat code. Nice trench. Uh, we'll do some hand digging at both ends, clean it up, and then we'll be ready to put the pipe in. Uh, Joe, my plumber guy, he, if you remember way back when, he helped do a lot of the underground on the shop with the uh, plumbing as well as the uh, radiant heat. He's gonna hopefully bring the pipe over today so we can get this laid in, closed up. All right, 107 and a half. 107 and a half. Way easier than hand digging. <laughs> All right, so we've got a hundred and fifty foot of inch and a quarter. I did not need inch and a quarter, but my uh, my plumber uh, Joe, he was like, dude, for the extra maybe hundred bucks, just put inch and a quarter, and I will never have a need for anything larger. So we can kind of do whatever. Greg, I'm gonna have you hold this. And we're just gonna roll this sucker out because it's gonna be, I'm afraid it's gonna be a mess, you know? We should take this out in the sun for a little bit. You think that's gonna matter? I don't know. I think we've already kind of messed up. It does look like that. I think we gotta roll from that side. I think that one's our outer. Let's try it. Yo. You know, if we had a spool, this would be a lot easier. Oh yeah. You just hold it, man. You want to pick it up and put it in the trench from Go there? Go ahead. There. Now just kind of get it in that corner and... Look at that sick bend we got there, man. Oh yeah, I got plenty. It's one to flex towards the building. Oh, it's about the same. Uh, you're too light, dude. I, I, you need to like be able to put your like, you know, like you need to be like juice. Be like juice. <laughs> yeah. That guy digs a hole better than anybody I've ever seen.
push with all my might into this dirt. Okay. Honestly. It's an old trampoline pipe I found in the woods when I was clearing the soil. We'll set that bad boy. I'm gonna go get the riser. You got a, yeah, never mind. What's that? I was gonna ask if you had a sledgehammer, but you do. I do not. It's right. I mean, somewhere I do. It's right there. All right, fish this over. This this has come off though. Does, oh no, it doesn't. No. Uh -uh. Never mind. All right. So this guy's gonna go over here. This is what's got to go all the way up. Mm. All the way up in there. So that's why I feel like I need some more. There. Okay, now put your meat, meat sticks on there and. Just don't hit me. Again. Well, you better be good. Why not? I don't know. I feel like we should be heating it up, brother. That's what you do for most peck style. Pretty simp, huh? Okay. Sometimes you just gotta be smart. Okay, all right, simple Simon, dude. Shove this back up here. And then this through. Obviously my buddy Joe's gonna come by and do the final hookups and check everything. But uh, he'd been pretty busy and he said just to get this thing buried so I can get my seeding started before the end of the year. Can you hold this on there? This is pretty darn easy, which actually it is. Now that I got one done, I think the other one will be easy. It's pretty simple. I think if we get it here, we can always bend it back against the pipe. You see what I'm saying? Yep. You agree with that? Yep. Okay. So let's go ahead and drive this pipe in. Yeah. All right, before we start burying this up, we're going to throw a tracer wire in it. So here, take that. Spin around the other 180. Yep, yep. You take that. Giddy up, buddy. And then bring that wire back. I need it. This is so that if ever I need to locate this gas pipe, since it's a plastic pipe, you can't locate it. There's no way to tie onto it. Like if you're electrical, uh, you need to find where that is. You can just hook up to the wire with a tracer and then go find it. But here you don't have that. So you put this tracer wire so that whoever's locating it, they come up and they will hook hook on right here. And then it will send an electrical current through that wire and they can locate it. Same thing they do, you'll notice, right here. So that I know where this pipe, I can go find it going up to my uh, main service up at the road. Well, it's not too small. It'll work. Get them both. But I just need to be straighter. You know what I'm saying? It'll go if this is straight. It just needs to be like mm -hmm. straight up and down. So you mean bringing you in to the building more? Nope. This seems like the most redneck thing to do, <sighs> but I'm I'm not opposed. To, yeah, I think we need to come into the building just a hair more. Ready? Wait, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, go. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold up. There you go. I mean, if it works, it works. Look at this good old dirt, man. Ooh, that floated up a hair. This gray's got to come up quite a bit, though, so I'm not too worried. I'm going to be, mm -hmm. I'll be up here. I mean, I think it's a better cut than yours. You call that straight? It goes right down here. Straighter than yours. It's a bull. <laughs> you got a nice angle on yours. Mine went perfectly into the, uh, mm -hmm. we'll into the thing. Run it back. We'll run it back. Good job, dude. I'm really appreciating of you working hard to <clears throat> Just trying to do straight. my best for yeah. my client. Our client. Fire in the hole. <laughs> Thick pipe. You're not hurting it at all. Go around it, yeah. 
Yeah? Yeah. You know where the hottest point of the, the flame is? The tip. Everybody always puts like marshmallows and things right at like the bottom of the flame, you know? It's like it's right where that, that color changes. And yeah. That, right at that point. Oh, you're you always amaze me with the knowledge that you store in that brain of yours and just randomly let it out. So, I got selective learning. Push, push you. You push that side. I'm pushing this. Side. Yeah, I was trying to pull your hand with me. Okay. No, yep. Now you yep. tighten that. That's not We're not. Way. That's the wrong way, dude. <laughs> in all fairness, I was. Uh, I think I was going, going like you know the right way for what I thought, but it wasn't right. <laughs> this is crazy to me. But if it works, it works, right? Yeah. Uh, was it like a 50 cent piece a dollar no probably like four bucks four bucks no worth it right. yep go ahead man fill that up wait 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 i gotta get that grill back out okay let's go We'll get this closed up and then I'll show you guys what I've been working on inside, which is uh, my electrical. So I uh, went to YouTube and no, I'm joking. I've been doing electrical unlicensed for 20 years. So I kind of know a thing or two. How many houses have burned down? None. Not, okay, that's Exactly. Good. That's and good. I've done total <laughs> house remodels multiple times, all new wiring. It's really not that hard. I don't think we could have done any better, man. Right up, right in. Yeah, nice easy. Work. Nice work. Awesome. All right, guys. Gas service is at least uh, all the way around. The reason we did this is because it would have been just, well, I think more expensive, but also a pain to have to go through the wall here and get all the way around the building on the inside without disturbing my air control layer, which is that Myrex inside. If you remember, and if, if you don't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, because you haven't uh, followed along with the RRHQ 2.0 build. I got a whole playlist, so make sure you go check that out, catch you up to speed. There's only like, you know, 60 videos to watch, so you should be caught up in no time. But uh, let's go inside, I'll show you what I've been working on with the electrical. All right, so obviously it stinks to have moved all this stuff, but I actually like it better because I think having my door into the bathroom is better suited here and having this extra space to maybe put things on the wall here like coats or bibs is nice as well as giving me more room to work inside of this mechanical room. Now my buddy Art is the one that did this electrical initially. He mounted that box for me before I realized I, and I didn't share that with him where the boiler was going so we didn't talk about it, that's my fault. That's why I had to remove this box. And I've been working on slowly doing some electrical as I go. In fact, I've made myself a little list of all the, the circuits that I think I want. And I might add to it as I go. And some of these are like, I don't really need its own circuit, but I'm just gonna leave it on its own circuit because I, I do have the space for it. But uh, I know people are gonna comment on why am I using Romex instead of conduit. First off, where I'm at, it's not code. You don't have to use uh, any conduit. I like using Romex because, I mean, I don't, I don't do conduit all day so that's not my trade it's very easy for me to pull and run Romex um, and I know the other argument is going to be what about what about in the future if you want to add something it's a workshop blah 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 I mean 
I can do that. I can always add later and run conduit if I wanted to, if I needed it. But understand, I've in my last shop for ten years, I never, I never changed my electrical one time. I never had to. I don't, I don't really work out here. This is more of a storage space. So my biggest thing, guys, and maybe you can help me with this, is I'm standing underneath of a high bay light, and I've actually got fifteen of these lights ready to use in the ceiling. But I put it up and I don't know if it's really what I want to do. So I went out and bought this other light and I am struggling because it's very hard to tell what this is going to look like when all the lights are in here. With only one light, it still feels dark. So because I've been struggling with my lighting so much, I actually did pick this up and this is a, a, a light meter, okay? And what this is going to tell me is how many foot candles I'm getting down here. Now, this is a high bay and my biggest thing was I needed to get the light up top where it's actually going to be in the 16 foot to measure um, the foot candles. And I, I want to be in like the 40 to 50 range. Now, if I hold this right underneath of it and you want to do it at like, you know, bench top height, I'm at 146 foot candles, right? I start to walk away. I'm at 88. So that's how quickly this light kind of dies off 80. I don't know if you can see this, right? So that's like natural light because I have I'm like pointed away from the light now. We're at only 15 foot candles right here. But as I walk in, 140, right? So this is I didn't tell you guys, this is a 15,000 lumen light. Yes, 15,000. And this is a 30,000 lumen light. So 140 foot candles underneath of it. And this one at that height, I'm only at 95. This is a useful tool because I can kind of figure out, okay, as I move over, let's call it 10 feet, I drop down to 80 foot candles. That's still plenty enough for me. But what this allows me to do is I know I can go online. I can check those. There's, they have like lighting calculators where you can say the space and then you can say how many foot candles you want or whatever. And it will tell you where to place your lights. This light right here i was told by that calculator i only needed three of them in this space to me that's not enough i mean so i just wanted to get one up i wanted to measure it myself i wanted to see what it felt like and even i mean i'm 10 15 feet away and i'm still measuring 60 foot candles at this height so i think that this is the type of light i should go with i just don't like how harsh it is on my eyes when it comes into field of view. So if I'm standing here and those lights over there are on, it's gonna be like hitting in my eye. So I, that's, I'm looking for a diffused light, something that is a little bit softer to the eyes, but this is a pretty cool tool. If you don't, uh, if you don't have one of these, it was pretty cheap on Amazon. I'll throw, a, I'll throw a link down below if I remember, but you can just test and make sure that you got the proper lighting. And every different scenario has like a recommended uh, foot candle. So these are high bays. I know that's not what I want here. So please drop me down in the comment section if you have done uh, a shop or been around a shop. I'm worried about shooting video content in here in the future. I want good lighting. So I've, I've been told, make sure I have like a CRI rating of 90 plus, which is, uh, that's the color rendering index, which is basically gonna tell me how close to real light the fixture is producing. So the color could seem a little bit off from what is actual. Does that matter? Probably not. But anyway, drop me a comment on that. So that's kind of where I'm at with this process. I got Eric coming down very soon to do my boiler. I've got my gas line now ran. Joe, my plumber, is going to do that as well as get my water lines hooked up from the house to here because I got a well at my house. And I'm on the road here with electrical. Greg's been helping me. We've got a ton of wiring that we have to run. And I am struggling a little bit on how that's going to happen with the Myrex and reducing punctures in the Myrex to keep it all inside my air control air. We'll do probably the next video on this build. We'll be more concentrated on lighting and electrical outlet layout and how we're gonna get the lights and the wires ran in this place. So if you're interested in that, how we're gonna do electrical, because this is easy, just running it in the stud wall, um, that's easy. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, stay tuned, and that'll probably be in a future video on RRHQ. So thanks a lot, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this little you know, I guess little recap on what's been going on here at RHQ and what we've been up to. And we'll catch you on the next video. Later.